Hello, my name is Bearhead. We're introducing a new cooking program for public television. It's called Cooking with the Colonel, meaning Colonel Doug Allard, who is a gourmet chef unknown to me for quite a few years, but he's quite good at his art, and he will be showing you how to cook deer, elk, commodities, whatever you have. He's uh, quite good at it, and we hope you'll enjoy the program. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to another episode of Cooking with the Colonel. Today, we're going to cook you some buffalo shish kebabs, and we're working in a little different location. A uh, number of years ago, right here on the edge of my house, I built a Mexican kitchen, uh, which you can't see all of here, but I have a barbecue, a stove over there, a sink here. <clears throat> we have a Mexican tile roof, Mexican tile floor, and all handmade Mexican furniture. And that has nothing to do with what we're eating, but it's a very nice place in the afternoon in Montana. It's about 65 degrees out here, something like that. Absolutely beautiful. Today, we're making buffalo shish kebabs. This is what they look like when they get all strung up. This is what they look like before we string them up. This buffalo is a buffalo that uh, came out of my own herd, Buffalo Bob White up here Ronan butchered it for us. I've marinated, I've parboiled the buffalo for about half an hour last night, marinated it in a combination of garlic, soy sauce, Italian dressing, lemon juice, a little salt and pepper. They it imparts some flavor to the buffalo, but it also makes it tender. And when I'm making the shish kebabs here, it doesn't really make any difference how you put them on. I just kind of put a bunch of stuff on here. I'm using green pepper, red pepper, red onion, pardon me, and mushrooms. And we just kind of keep going around here until until we either run out of uh, sticks or until we run out of stuff to put on them. I like the onions myself, so I put big th thick chunks of onion on there. Most everybody else likes the meat better. So some people say more meat. I say more onions. So we just kept going here till we got about to the end. Do another one here. We'll start out with the green pepper. Nice piece of marinated buffalo meat. Red pepper. A chunk of red onion. Mushroom. Another piece of meat. Another green pepper. Another red pepper, another big healthy chunk of onion, another piece of meat, another red pepper, throw a little mushroom on there. Well, we just we have just about enough of these to, to get a good start here, ladies and gentlemen. I have my grill on over here. I have an outdoor grill here. It's a grass gr gas grill. It's on high. I'll move this stuff over to the side. It's a gas grill. It's on high, and I'm just going to put the shish kebabs. You didn't see that one fall on the floor, did you? I'm just going to put the shish kebabs along here so the little end of the shish kebab sticking out is not over the flame but over the edge. The meat really is about half cooked right now. 
because we marinated it, which does some cooking, and we parboiled it a little bit before that. So that's what the shish kebabs look like when they're sitting on the grill. Now I'm going to take a little Italian dressing right out of the bottle, marinate these a little bit with the Italian dressing. It gives some real good flavor to the vegetables. You don't want to put too much marinade on because it is oily and if it drips down you'll get a lot of flame up on your shish kebabs and flame up's not bad when you're cooking steaks or hamburgers but on the shish kebab the flame up is not really too good. So that'll take care of our, our uh, shish kebabs for a while now. We'll, we let those cook for about probably three to four minutes on each side and then just turn them over once and let them cook about three or four or five minutes on the other side. Uh, this buffalo meat, although it's considered a domestic animal these days, when, the, when buffalo was wild and the Indians and the Western people and the mountain men lived on it. They were much healthier than people are now because buffalo is about 26% leaner than beef and the fat in buffalo has about nearly 30% less cholesterol than beef. So buffalo is a good thing for you to eat. It's healthy. It's a little hard to cook sometimes because you never know if you're getting an old bull or a young cow or what. But uh, sometimes if you get an old bull, uh, you've got to cook it a long time before it's very tender. But at any rate, it's uh, good and nutritious. Uh, day before yesterday over here in the Indian Community Center, we had our 24th annual buffalo feast. And uh, my family has put that on ever since the first year of our powwow. And Buffalo Bob White, who butchered my buffalo here for me, pit barbecued about 200 pounds of buffalo roast, cooked them all night in a pit down below the store, puts wood down, uh, puts tin on top of it, puts the buffalo on it, covers it with dirt, puts more wood on top, and let it, lets it cook for about 12 hours. And I'll tell you, if you want to eat some good meat, that's as best as you'll ever eat. It's as good and tender as anything. It comes out of there with flavor. Uh, we fed, uh, I think, Saturday 300 people with 200 pounds of buffalo meat. So that's about three quarters of a pound a piece, something like that. And they would have come back for more. I think they'd eaten 600 pounds if we'd have had it. But as you can see, the shish kebabs here, and I just flip it over and look at it. Now, you can't see any brown or anything yet on that side of that one. So. It's really, when uh, you just see a little charred spot on each of them, on, mostly on the pieces of meat, then you give it a flip over. And we're not quite ready to do that yet. Uh, as soon as we do, I did drop one on the floor here. We're not going to cook that, though. Watch closely, so I only put it over here in the sink. Don't think I'd feed that bear head. Probably isn't even going to show up today. I'm going to give these a little turn there just to see how they're doing. It's a lot easier to turn them if you use the, the little tongs here. As you turn them, you can see that the one side is getting a little dry. The side that's been, that's been next to the, the flame is getting a little dry. So we're going to give it one more little shot of marinade here. I had a granddaughter who had a wedding here last summer, and we made 480 shish kebabs. They weren't buffalo. 
they were beef shish kebabs, but we made 480 and people ate them up in an hour and a half. We served dinner for about 400 people, something like that, right here. Cooked them on this, on this thing. Now while that's, I have some fried rice here that we're going to serve with our dinner that I heated up, made in a wok inside. Probably still warm. Give, I'm going to give it a little stir. Heat it up a little bit in this wok. The only thing I haven't put in it yet that I put in is the egg. And I uh, scrambled some egg in the wok just before I did the fried rice. And the egg not only makes it taste pretty good, but it makes it look like the genuine Chinese fried rice then. Probably could have made the fried rice right in the wok on top of the top of the grill, but I'd never tried doing that before, so I didn't want to experiment too much here. But we're going to serve the fried rice and the buffalo shish kebabs here directly. Our uh, official taster and part of this crew, Bearhead, evidently forgot to show up today, but he is a very old man and sometimes we have to forgive him for showing up. He's getting a little forgetful and he tells me he makes new friends every day now. Same old people, but he doesn't remember them, so they're all his new friends. So he's not going to be our tester today, so our tester, we're going to have the better tester anyway. We've got number one tester, number two tester. Number two tester is one of the cameramen here, Roy Big Crane. And when we get this little bugger done, Roy's going to sit down and see if, how he likes this buffalo meat. Fried rice. Check these out and see how they are. A little longer. Oh, that fried rice is getting nice and warm now on the bottom. I just turned these again and I'm going to give them their last shot of last shot of marinade on here. This kind of keeps them a little moist too because Meat does have a tendency to dry out a little bit when you're grilling it outside. So this Italian dressing keeps it a little moist too. Now I had some tomatoes here and I was going to stick a tomato on the end of each one uh, about the time they were done. I brought these tomatoes out and was going to show you what happens to a tomato if you put a tomato on at the same time you do the peppers, the meat, the onion, and the mushroom. What happens to the tomato is that it cooks too fast. That's why you also have to parboil the meat and marinate it because it cooks much slower than the vegetables. So you have to bring the meat up to where it's about half cooked so that it'll cook the same time as, in the same time as the vegetables. But if you put a tomato on that skewer, and do it at the same time as you do the rest of the vegetables. By the time you're, you're through cooking your shish kebabs, the tomato will all be melted and, and uh, falling apart and shriveled up and it just, it ruins. It doesn't, doesn't hold on there, although they do taste good. So what I do many times is just take a shish kebab like this, don't have one on the end, and they're right at the end, the last, couple of minutes, throw a tomato on like that. It's kind of, uh, also kind of pretty. I got a, another one down here that I can do another one with too. The green pepper fell off. And you'll see how they 
turn out. Although the the uh, tomatoes look good and they are delicious grilled, if you over grill them, you end up with nothing, just a burned tomato and a charred skin mostly. The buffalo that we have here, we raised ourselves in a pen over here on the highway in front of our store. And buffalo are really native to this area, the buffalo, domestic buffalo that we have now, because my great-grandfather and a guy named Michael Pablo were what they call the saviors of the buffalo. They had the last naturally wild herd of buffalo right here on the Flathead Reservation in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So buffalo is nothing new to this area. They tried to sell them to the United States government. It's a very long story. The government wouldn't buy them, so they sold them to the Canadian government. Ten years later, they opened the National Bison Range and bought them back from a man named Conrad in Kalispell who bought some from my grandfather. And the Canadian government sold some back that they had bought from the other members of my family and from uh, Michelle Pablo. So that all the buffalo that are here are actually descendants of my family and the Pablo family herd from many years ago. So we're awful proud of having buffalo and my little herd there. I bought the stock that I started it from 25 years ago from the bison range. So I really still have descendants of my own family's buffalo herd. Now, whether they ever made shish kebabs or not in those days, I don't know. I'd kind of doubt if they ever did. I think they just made a whole bunch of roast and a whole bunch of steak, and that's probably the way they did it, and a little buffalo stew. But you never know. They did have at one time on the Allard Ranch here on the reservation in the late 1800s a Chinese cook. And Michelle Pablo was part Spanish, part Mexican. So you never know exactly what they may have done to the food. Uh, they may have had all kind of interesting things. They may even have, have had fried rice with their buffalo like we're having today. Buffalo dry meat. The, uh, about half of the buffalo that was eaten on this side of the mountains, between half and three quarters of the buffalo that was eaten by our people on this side of the mountains, and remember that buffalo were not native to the western part of the state of Montana. Those buffalo that we raised here later on came over from a Blackfoot Indian who came over here and my grandfather and uh, my great-grandfather and Michelle Pablo bought them from. But they used to have to bring their buffalo meat back from, east of the Monta from eastern Montana and it was all made into dry meat and jerky, all that they brought back because they had no refrigeration. They didn't can, so the meat that they brought back, they brought in great big parflesh cases, rawhide containers and that dry meat would last for a year. And then in a year, if they were out, they'd go on another buffalo hunt because a buffalo hunt lasted six months to a year. Sometimes if the hunting wasn't too good, they were gone over a year on a buffalo hunt. But most of the tribe was there, so whatever they had to eat there was fine. I think our shish kebabs here are just about done. I'm gonna check my, ooh. My fried rice, I should not have moved those, let those handles sit in the... Oh, see my glass nice and steamy there. We'll move that off to the side. I'll get a plate there. Frank, you wanna hand me a plate there and we'll, we'll dish one up these, one of these up for our... We're, I'm gonna put a little fried rice on the plate here. Well, Roy's a pretty good eater. And then I'm going to take a couple of shish kebabs, lay them on top of that. 
I'll put a little slice of tomato here just to make it look good. Bearhead always gives me an eight or a nine because I don't see give them a little parsley on the plate. So bearhead wherever you are, see the little parsley on the plate laying here by the tomatoes. And this is what Roy's plate is going to look like for his dinner. So as soon as we get him situated over there, he's got to run his camera right now. But as soon as we get him situated over here, we'll switch around and see how he likes it. And I'll turn mine off, and we'll all be ready to go eat there pretty soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my tests are here today. Instead of being the uh, ornery old grouchy bear head, is one of our cameramen, Mr. Roy Big Crane. He's going to try our buffalo shish kebabs and our Chinese fried rice and give us a report. He's going to grade me on the basis of 0 to 10. And since we have the sprigs of parsley that Bearhead always demands on the plate, the artistic presentation is taken care of. Well, Roy, take a bite or two and see what you think of it. OK, I guess I'll start off with the a mushroom here. A mushroom there. Looks like it's done just about right. How does that uh, marinated buffalo taste? That's a uh, French dressing marinade. Everything, the vegetables, uh, the mushroom you just ate was marinated with that. Uh, the meat is marinated with French dressing uh, plus uh, soy sauce, uh, garlic, lemon juice, salt and pepper. Give that meat a try. See how the buffalo is. What's the verdict on the buffalo? Tender. Tender. Tastes good? Tastes good. The uh, marinade is not real strong, so that it but it did takes give away it some the taste. Good flavor. Yeah. It doesn't take away the taste from the from buffalo. Oh, yeah. well, good. Good. That was a good piece of buffalo, too. Well, give that fried rice a try and see how that came out. See, folks, he's just a lot easier eater than Bearhead. Bearhead now would be complaining about something by now. He would have found something in there he didn't like and uh, ask why we don't have a tablecloth, and that's because we're eating outside and wood is better outside, and we got a nice wooden top table. But Roy's a gentleman. He hasn't complained about anything yet. What do you think of the fried rice, Roy? It's good. Good, good stuff, huh? Good. I, yeah, I like rice. and. Very good. Very well, what good. would you give the whole dinner then on the basis of 1 to 10? It, it'd easily be a 10 in my book. Hey, all right. We don't need Bearhead anymore for anything. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be our show for today. Another episode of Cooking with the Colonel. And today, instead of eating with the Bearhead, it's eating with the Roy Big Crane. And now we're going to sit down. Frank and I, and have a little to eat too. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed the show.